hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. Let's hit give the Lord a good hand praise. Clap your hands to the Lord. Lift your voice to it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That's it. Just an- another moment. Clap your hands and lift your voice. With all your heart, praise Him for His goodness. Hallelujah. sabante. Oh, hallelujah. Man, amen, amen. Praise God. It's always exciting to be in the house of the Lord. And especially in the house of the Lord when a, an assembly is gathering that is and enthusiastic about worshiping God and praying. And um, I appreciate this good touch of God. We appreciate Brother and Sister Booker, their f- family. Praise God and uh, this church family. It's good to meet the, the missionaries to Ethiopia, Brother Solomon, his son. We appreciate these folks very much. And, and um, I appreciate those that preach truth in every country. Amen. And I pray for our missionaries daily that God will bless the truth that's been preached in all of our countries. Amen. By these apostolic preachers that that believe the truth. And I appreciate pastors like Brother Booker that's still standing for the message in this hour. Amen. We're thanking God for what he's done so far. And we're believing him to continue to move this weekend and and through the other services we'll have. As Brother Booker said, Thursday night also there was a young man that that prayed through. They'd been seeking for, I think, uh, two or three years, maybe four years, received the Holy Ghost and another visitor, um, visiting man, first time there, he got very close to receiving the Holy Ghost. And nothing is any more exciting. Thank God for ten that have received the Holy Ghost for the first time. I believe five that have prayed through, back through backsliders. Amen. We just give the Lord a good hand. Amen. A good praise for that. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's don't limit God in what he can do today and tonight. Praise God. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. Amen. My wife and I appreciate all the good hospitality, the kindness that you have shown toward us in making us feel very comfortable uh, here and in these services. Luke 21 and 25. Amen. Jesus speaking concerning the signs of the end time. And there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven should be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spake to them a parable, Behold the the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation that he's talking about in this end time shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And verse 34, and take heed to yourselves. Now he's talking to the disciples as well. Lest at any time, everyone say any time, your hearts be overcharged. Everyone say overcharged. How? With serviting and drunkenness and cares of this life so that 
day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Verse 34 again as the heart of our text here. And take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with serviting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you unawares. I want to talk about overcharged hearts, overcharged hearts. Lift your hands, let's love him. In the name of the Lord, let the word of God have free course here today. God, we thank you for this touch of the Holy Ghost in this service. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence that's here. God, speak through me, Lord God, to this congregation and let all of our hearts be open to your word. Talk to us through the book today and with your spirit and we'll give you the praise. And if there's any here that doesn't have the Holy Ghost, and I'm sure there are, I want you to feel several with the Holy Ghost here today. Give the Lord one more good hand praise. (laughs) Hallelujah. Lift your voice and clap your hands to the Lord. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just glad you've got the Holy Ghost in your heart. I'm just glad you've got the joy and the peace of God reigning in your heart in this perilous hour that we're living in. Come on, the more wicked it gets out there and the more pressure's on, the more I appreciate the Holy Ghost. That he's put in my heart to keep me in perfect peace. I mean, it's glad for a perfect peace. Amen. That the Holy Ghost keeps our hearts in and our minds. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. Praise God. There is, there is no reason. Amen. Why we should be sick with worry in this hour. Praise God. When he's promised to keep those in perfect peace, amen, whose mind stayed on him. And this Holy Ghost brings a, a rest and a peace. And Jesus is talking about this end time and the signs of the end. And he talks about signs being in the sun, the moon, the stars, and and the distress of the nations and perplexity. And, the, and all of this is coming, men's hearts failing for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. He's talking about, amen, a very perilous hour, a very unusual time that we're, amen, we've entered into in this end time hour. And and then he said when all of these things are beginning to come to pass and are coming to pass, then he said, uh, then they shall see the Son of Man coming in, in a cloud with power and great glory. Praise God. And he says, when you see all these things coming to pass, amen, look, look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And he's warning and he turns, amen, he said, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. And he said, take heed to yourselves. Everyone say to myself. Take heed to yourselves. Amen. The pressure's not just on, amen, those that don't have the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of pressure that's being faced by the church in this hour as well. Lest at any time, it's so easy, it's so easy to to allow our hearts to be overcharged. And uh, with he says here, and we're going to read another verse to tie in with this, but he says here in particular with surfeiting, drunkenness, cares of this life. And that day will come upon us unaware. Amen. Of course, that word overcharged means to feel or to load too full. Praise God. Amen. To let things, amen, overload us or overcharge our hearts. I mean, knows that he said, take heed, lest that any time. Amen. I mean, you could, you could wake up this morning and, uh, feeling light and free, amen, in the spirit and in the presence of the Lord. But if you're not careful in a day's time, if we're not 
walking in the Spirit the way we ought to if we're not, amen, keeping ourselves unloaded, amen, from the things of this world that we could be overcharged at any time. Amen. It could come upon us from one hour to the other. From one hour to the other, we could be, amen, we could be just feeling good and free. But if we're not, if we're not really, amen, walking as close to Him as we should, and we're not keeping a thankful heart, and if we're not really keeping a spirit of prayer, we could, amen, our hearts could just be, amen, loaded down, amen, and overwhelmed. Amen. And just, uh, in a moment's time, it seems, uh, amen, that's the kind of hour that we're living in, amen. Th- th- Jesus spoke of this, these perilous times, and he talked about this hour that we're living in, amen. And, and a, lot of, a lot of God's people, amen, you know, have lost a lot of joy, amen. We need joy in this hour. We need joy in this hour. We've got to, amen, we've got to, amen, we've got to have joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Too many overcharged hearts. I understand in the world. I see, amen, it's very plain. Amen. Why? Amen. Uh, uh, so many are distressed in, in this world because they don't have the Holy Ghost. And, amen. And they, they're not able to unload from the cares of this life. And they're seeking it in drugs and alcohol and other things. And, and they're becoming more loaded down and more overcharged. Amen. Amen. But we, the church, there's no reason why. Amen. That we should ever become overcharged. Amen. With the things of this world. Amen. If we allow the Spirit, amen, to work in our lives the way He intended it. Amen. Too. Amen. I admit the pressure's on in this hour. So much the more why we should continually go to Him in prayer. Amen. And we should continually, amen, unload, amen, from the cares of this whole world today. Amen. We've got to stay free. We've got to stay joyful. Come on, we've got to, amen, we've got to keep a praise on our heart in this hour. And the only way we can do that is what we mention often. Stay renewed in the Holy Ghost on a daily basis. We cannot meet the challenge in this, of this hour. Preachers are saints. Amen. And of course the world will not, amen, be able, amen, to meet the challenges of this hour. Amen. We cannot without, amen, being full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. Brother, when we get overcharged hearts, uh, amen, then, amen, it causes problems in all the relationships that we have in our home, in our church, where, amen, where, amen, on the job, amen, when folks get overcharged and loaded down, amen, with, amen, the cares of this life, amen, with the problems of this life, amen, with the needs that they're facing, the financial needs, the needs, the health issues and other things, uh, amen, the, the problems in relationship, amen, brother, amen, then when that, amen, over, amen, overloads us and overcomes us, amen, then we're, there's tension and there's pressure, amen, there's sharp words being said in the home and in other places, uh, amen, because somebody is not unloading, amen, the care, from the cares of this world. Come on, let's give the Lord a a good hand praise. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. We need a daily, amen, walk with God. We need a daily experience in God. And you that are here without the Holy Ghost today, youth or or adults, amen, uh, whoever you are that are here without the Holy Ghost, you'll not be able to To survive in this, amen, end time between now and the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Without a genuine experience in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And you've got to have that, amen, to, amen, to survive in this end time hour. Amen. Luke 8 and 14. Amen. Jesus is speaking here, amen, about the parable of the sower. And we want to look especially at verse 14. Amen. And and that which fell when this sower went forth to sow, it fell on different ground. That which fell among the thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked. Everyone say choked. 
with what? Cares. Now he's naming cares here, but he's also saying riches and pleasures of this life. And bring no fruit to perfection. And so, amen, we're not only being choked out as as these thorns represent, choking out the fruit, uh, but we're, amen, by cares, but riches and pleasures can also choke. I mean, when you're choked physically, it doesn't matter, amen, whether it's uh, amen, a peanut butter sandwich or the best steak you can eat. You're dead. Amen. Amen. Being choked is choked. Amen. And, and a lot of folks have been choked spiritually by pleasures as well as cares. Amen. But, amen, he said in his presence is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Amen. The world are looking for pleasures, but the world, amen, the pleasures the world are searching for, amen, will not bring them any peace of mind. Amen. And if you're seeking for pleasure somewhere away from the presence of God and out of, of the presence of God, amen, then that is no real lasting pleasure. But the only real joy and the only real pleasure, amen, is in the presence of the Lord. And a lot of apostolics need to learn that in this hour. Amen. They're too busy, amen, enjoying themselves, trying to hear there and the other. And it's all right to have fun. And it's all right, amen, to, amen, to enjoy doing other things. Uh, but there is no real pleasure and there is no real joy outside of the presence of the Lord. Amen. God's got a rule in your heart. And folks are, amen, even a lot of apostolics are, amen, leaving off prayer meetings and leaving off their dedication and running here and there, amen, trying to, amen, make up the difference some way or another. But there's absolutely nothing like a good prayer meeting where you pray through talking in tongues, amen, and unload some things. You've got to do it on a daily basis. You've got to do it. It don't take long to get loaded down. Amen. It don't take long. You've got to unload on a daily basis. Come on. We can't be choked by cares and the pleasures. Amen. And the riches of this world. We can't allow the things of this world to choke out the fruit. Amen. That God wants to bring forth in our lives. So we've got to fight, as we've said before. Amen. For a place in God. Amen. We, amen. We've got to fight for a place in, in prayer and a place in our fellowship with Him. Amen. That's the only thing that's going to take us through. Amen. In this hour. Amen. We've got to unload every day. Every day. Amen. We've got to get rid of some things. Amen. Just everyday business. Amen. Just every day, amen, living, it's got a way, amen, of just piling up on us. Amen. You wake up, you go through the day, amen. By the end of the day, amen, if you hadn't had a good prayer meeting, amen, then you feel the load, amen, of the business of that day and of just living in this world. And what do you say, amen, amen, First Peter First Peter 5, 6, and 7, I believe. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Look at the word he's using there. Amen. Casting all your care upon him. He talks about, amen, the, our enemy, uh, the devil is a roaring lion. Amen. Seeking whom he may devour. How many knows? Amen. We've got to learn to cast some things on God. Amen. We've got to learn sometimes that, you know, that word looks like it takes quite an effort sometimes. Amen. That casting. We gotta get violent with it sometimes. We've gotta, we've gotta make our mind up. I'm getting out from under this load. I'm worrying myself sick and it's not right. 
There's some folks that are letting it affect their health and their, amen, their family and their relationship with others because they will not pray through. They will not cast things, amen, the things that are piling up in their lives. They will not cast it on Him. Amen. But we've got to make a, a, an effort. Sometimes it takes a great effort. Amen. Some folks think if I'm not worrying, amen, then I'm not, amen, then it seems that they don't feel like they are really concerned. There's a lot of difference. It's not the will of God that we worry ourselves sick. Matter of fact, amen, 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 when we worry, it is a sign and we express that worry. It is a sign that we haven't prayed through over what we're worrying about. If you're worried today, if you're really worried and fretting today over any issue, it is, amen, it is that issue that you've not put in God's hands and that you've not prayed through over. Because when we really pray through, amen, we rest in the Holy Ghost. That's the will of God for the saint of God. We rest. There's too many worrying people in Pentecost. There's too many fretting saints. Come on. We better, we need to reach for rest in this hour. We need to reach for peace in this hour. We need to reach, amen, for a place in Him. What did He say? Amen. Philippians 4, amen, chapter 4, verse number 6. Let's read that. Be careful for nothing. Now, this is a great challenge. He He wasn't meaning, amen, to be reckless and careless out there and and uh and and not have any responsibility simply what he meant don't worry about anything in plain english be careful for nothing don't worry about anything but in everything this is a key for not worrying about anything but in everything by prayer And supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. What beautiful and powerful scriptures for us in this end time hour. In simple language, he's saying, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Amen. And don't forget to give God the praise for answering your prayers. And when we pray through about everything that is of any concern of ours, amen, it's not enough just to pray. We've got to pray through. Amen. We've got to We've got to rest some things with God. We've got to lay some things at His feet. We've got to pray till we've been delivered of some burdens uh, that have been weighting us down. I'm, I'm not talking about, amen, uh, burdens that are from God that of souls praying through and, and things of that sort. But there are a lot of burdens that God's people and others are carrying in this hour that's got them weight, weighted down that we've got to get off of us. Robbing you of your joy. Where's the smile? Where's the light? Amen. That should be on your face. Amen. Where? Amen. Is that, is that hope 
in your speaking, amen, that speaks with confidence of, the, of God and His ability to work for you. Amen. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything and be thankful. Amen. And thank Him, amen, for the answers that He's sending. You've got to rest it. You have got to pray through some things. We're not, we're not praying just to be praying. Amen. I love fellowship with him and I, I amen and amen. But if there were no answers, then prayer is not complete. An- answer, answers are the part of praying. And we need to, we need to rest our case with him. Amen. It's amen. We need as soon as we can, if we've got things that we're praying about, issues that we're praying about, needs that we're praying about, we need to rest them with him. We need to pray through as soon as we can. Amen. Concerning them and put them to rest. And what's going to happen? Verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I look at peace here as a sentinel. The peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep or guard your hearts and minds. Amen. We need a sentinel called peace that can guard our hearts and our minds in this hour. We need to be able. He said it's past his understanding this peace. Amen. When we ought to be worrying. You say, Brother Carol... You don't understand what I'm facing. Brother Carol, you don't understand the, the issues in my life. The burden of the finances, the burden of the health, and the burden of other, other situations in my life. But my sister, my brother, amen, our sinner friend, amen, he's promised, uh, amen, a perfect peace that passes understanding to keep when you ought to be worrying, you're praising God. When all the circumstances you're facing, amen, demands that you ought to be word sick. The peace of God that passes understanding is going to keep your heart in mind. If we work with this the way he desires that we work with it, and we should, we'll walk in perfect peace. Come on, give the Lord a good hand praise. Hallelujah. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. We need that, especially in this hour. We need that peace that passes understanding. Folks look at you and say, why aren't you worried? Because I prayed through over it. Amen. They'll look at you and wonder, amen, the difficult situation you're facing. It's a challenge. I understand that. I know it. Amen. We all are aware of the challenge of this hour. But we need to be that much more aware. Amen. That He's promised no matter, amen, if it is 2013, a perfect peace that passes understanding to keep our minds and our hearts. Come on, it's good for your health. It's good for your relationship with your family and your friends. When you're under pressure, you get gripey, amen, and grumbly, amen, and you're, amen, folks, you're not easy for folks to be around. You're sharp tongue and you, amen, you're, you're always saying something cutting, amen, and you got an attitude that, that you shouldn't have. That's not right. Amen. That's not the will of God. And God help us all in this hour. Amen. To stay. Amen. In the Holy Ghost. Amen. And keep, let that perfect peace. Amen. That passes understanding. Keep our hearts and minds. Come on. Give the Lord a good hand. Come on. Praise Him. Come on. We want it, don't we? If you haven't got it, you can have it. Amen. You can't have it if you don't pray every day. You you can't have it if you don't walk with the Spirit each day. Amen. But that's not hard when we've got our minds made up. Casting all your care on Him. He careth. 1 John 4 and 1. First John 4 and 1. 
Reading down to verse 4. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. You are of God, little children. Everyone say, I'm of God. If you're a child of God, you are of God. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. That's the world. And that's everything that opposes God in the world. Because greater... Is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Greater. We've got something greater or someone greater in us. You say, it's a lot of pressure out there. Yes, it is. But we've got something on the inside to equalize the pressure. Come on, that deep sea diver. Amen. He's got to have that. Amen. He's got to have that. As, you know, certain equipment and, and, and what it needs because the deeper he gets into that sea, the more pressure's pushing on him. Amen. And he's got to have that pressurized suit and he's got to have what it takes to equalize that pressure. And there's a lot of pressure in this world. Amen. But greater, it doesn't matter how great the pressure gets. Amen. The greater one is on the inside of us. We're not going to collapse. We're not going to cave in. Come on. We're, amen. No matter how great the pressure, you just keep praying through in the Holy Ghost. For greater is he that's in you. Come on. You've got the greater in you. I don't care how overwhelming it looks, ma'am, sir, amen, brother, sister, Amen. We have the Holy Ghost, the greater. Amen. There's nothing the world can bring our way. There's nothing that hell can belch out of his, amen, of the very, amen, quarters of hell and the bowels of hell. Amen. That can overcome us. For greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Come on. Give the Lord a good hand praise. You're not going to cave in if you stay full of the Holy Ghost. Come on, you're not going to be overcome. You say, I don't know what's going to happen. It's getting, you say, the pressure's getting great, Brother Carol, and I don't know what's going to happen. I'm facing a lot of pressure. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Just stay prayed through. Just stay prayed through. Just stay full of the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 5 and 16. That's why, amen, that's why we, amen, we are, we're preaching staying prayed through and staying renewed in the Holy Ghost. That's why we're trying to get as many prayed through as we can. The only means of survival in this hour that we're living is to stay full of the Holy Ghost. You want to enjoy, really enjoy living for God? Amen, child of God? Amen. Get full of the Holy Ghost and learn to cast your cares on Him. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Quit fretting. Amen. Quit worrying. Quit speaking doubt. Get, amen. Get the Word of God in you. Amen. And pray. And pray through every day. Pray through every day. Pray to your talking tongues. Pray to your renewed in the Holy Ghost. You hear me? Somebody said, I don't have time to pray. No wonder you're worried. No wonder you're fretting. Amen. I, you know, I'm too busy. Amen. You're too busy to go to heaven. If you're too busy to pray, you're too busy to be saved. Amen. We've got to pray. Amen. We've got to keep this. Amen. We've got to keep our hearts from being overcharged. People are doing stupid things in this hour. People are doing, amen, the, the, the most absurd things. Even, amen, Pentecostals are because they're not, 
Amen. They're not keeping their hearts free and they're not praying through it. The peace of God's not ruling the way it should. Amen. And brother, they're doing stupid things. They're leaving good churches and they're rebelling against the, the ministry and they're, amen, they're, amen, they're leaving God and, and they're doing things you'd never dream. Why? Their hearts are overcharged and they can't handle it and they fail to stay unloaded. Come on, give the Lord a good hand, praise. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. We've got to stay unloaded. We've got to let the peace of God. You've got to, if you want to survive between now and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we had better learn to pray through and unload some things and cast our cares on Him and let the peace of God. You better claim those scriptures, amen, that we read to you in Philippians 4. You better claim that perfect peace that passes understanding. We better claim, amen, that place in God. It's yours. Ooh, hallelujah. 516. Of Ephesians. Redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. (coughs) Wherefore be ye not unwise. But understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess. But be filled with the spirit. Speaking to yourselves. In psalms. And hymns. And spiritual songs. Singing. And making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always. It won't say always. For all things. Under God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so he said to be filled with the Spirit. Not drunk with wine. We need to be intoxicated with the Spirit. We need to be under the influence of the Spirit. Amen. And and he says we ought to be speaking to ourselves. There ought to be a song, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Singing and making what? Melody in our hearts to the Lord. It's not just, amen, repeating a word, that uh, a song that the rest of the church is singing. We've got to have a heart melody in this hour. It's got to be a song rolling over in our hearts in this hour. You hear me? Amen. It's got to be something from the heart, not just from the lips. Amen. We ought to, about the house when you're doing your work on the job. Amen. Sometimes, you know, many times it ought to be something rolling over and you're humming a song or singing a song and you don't even realize hardly that you're doing it. And and suddenly you realize, hey, that song's rolling over in the heart. Amen. In my mind. uh, Amen. Singing and making melody, melody in your heart. Come on, we've got to have that heart melody. You want to survive? Get that song in your heart. You need joy. We need joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Come on, amen. We need to pray through to that joy overflows. We need to learn to cast some things on Him. Come on, get unloaded. There's something you're not big enough to carry. I don't care how big a man you are. I don't care how much weight you can lift otherwise. There are some things that God didn't intend that we carry very long. He made a way that we could unload some things. That's why there's so much teenage suicide That's why there's so many divorces in this hour. That's why there's so many problems even in Pentecostal homes. People aren't unloading. I hear your pastor trying to get you to pray. Amen. And I believe that most of you are doing that. But let me tell you, we can't just pray. We've got to unload. We've got to get violent with some things. We've got to pray through over some things. We gotta get to the place with your issues and problems where you're really resting in the Holy Ghost. And a peace of God that passes understanding is keeping your heart and your mind. Hey! Ye lobo shataye! 
Come on. We need, we need to play together. We need to pray through and we need to pray for one another. Amen. He's promised. Take these, this word that we brought to you today. Claim it because he's promised a peace that passes understanding. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. We're, amen. It's only in the Holy Ghost. You can't have this peace outside the Holy Ghost. You can't. It's not just positive thinking. You've got to have an experience. Amen. Children, young people, adults, any of you that don't have the Holy Ghost today. This peace, this, this freedom, this song, this melody, this joy. Amen. That Brother Carroll's been preaching about today is all in the Holy Ghost. The, amen. The kingdom of God. This Holy Ghost is, amen, joy. It's peace. It's, it's righteousness. Amen. In the Holy Ghost. You've got to have a real experience for you to be able, amen, to have a real peace and joy in this hour. Amen. And when the day of Pentecost, chapter 2, verse 1, was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as the fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. How many is glad you've been filled with the Holy Ghost? Woo! Are you still full of the Holy Ghost? Have you talked in tongues today? Come on, are you full of the Holy Ghost today? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit Gave them the utterance. You've got to have this experience or you can't make it in this end time. You can't go back with Jesus when he comes without the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And without being baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. You better hurry up and do what this Bible says so you can get ready for his soon return. Amen. You've got to, amen. Let's read what he said. When the crowd gathered around, when the 120 come out of the upper room, they came by the thousands. We're looking on, amen, uh, toward the latter end of this second chapter. Amen. Uh, and they gathered around and they heard them speaking in tongues and said, what does this mean? Some accused them of being drunk. Amen. And, but others, amen, said, amen, you know, you know, we, amen, have now, amen, you know, we hear them speaking in our language. Nobody that was ever drunk learned a new language. Uh, amen, brother. Amen. But I've seen them so drunk in the flesh, amen, that they could speak English plain. Amen. But nobody's ever learned the language. This is a work of the Spirit. Now, when they heard this, verse 37, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Amen. You've got to obey this to be saved. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are forth, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. If you want this perfect rest, if you want this perfect peace, Amen. That we've been preaching about today. If you want to be ready for the coming of the Lord, you've got to obey the scripture. You've got to repent. Amen. Turn your back on sin. Quit doing the things that are wrong. Amen. Give your heart to God. Make your mind up. I'm not going back to those things. Get full of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. And get a, a man of God to baptize you calling the name of Jesus over you. Amen. Amen. That is the plan of salvation. Amen. You cannot get around it. You cannot be saved without it. But it brings, amen, if we'll obey it, if we'll live it, if we'll walk in it, amen, if we'll fulfill the word of God, amen, then the perfect peace is going to come into our hearts and lives if we'll pray through on a daily basis, amen, and walk in the spirit. You can have that experience today. Amen. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. It's not difficult to receive the Holy Ghost. You say, Brother Carol, it seems so hard to receive that kind of experience. It is so simple. It is so easy. Amen. That children, amen, that aren't even school age receive the Holy Ghost because he made it so simple that anybody could understand, amen, how to be saved. Amen. And it's not difficult 
God is not hard to work with. God is not hard to work with. You say, I don't know, amen, you know how, amen, to really approach God and yield to God and have God to move for him, for me. Amen. But God, when he sees your hunger, your desire, he meant he will meet that hunger and he will, he'll do what you're not able to do, but what, amen, the word has commanded you to do. If you'll repent, be baptized in Jesus' name. Get the Holy Ghost. Amen. He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost as you reach out to Him. Amen. Allow Him to come into your heart, not even thinking about what is it going to sound like? What am I going to act like? Amen. It'll be right, and God's going to give you what He said He would give you if you'll reach out and yield to Him. You don't have to worry about what it's going to sound like. It will sound absolutely right as you yield your voice, your heart, your voice, your tongue, your lips, amen, to the Spirit as He moves upon you and allows him to say anything he wants to through you as the spirit moves upon you amen amen it will be right is you and god amen working together it's simple it's easy amen yet it's life changing if our minds made up to live for god you sick of sin are you sick of the life that you're living Amen. Then God wants to do a miraculous work in your heart today stand your feet lift your hands to him Let someone come to the music. We're reaching out. Amen. It would be wonderful to see a number of people receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues here today. Amen. Lifting your hands together right now all over this room. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, yes. The church is praying right now. Come on, church. Lift your voices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to open these altars for any child, any young person, any adult that has not yet received the Holy Ghost. You don't have to leave this room today without the Holy Ghost. You want to be able to survive this end time. You want to be able to have, amen, a heart song, a rest in God. Get in here. Get full of the Holy Ghost today. Amen. Those that don't have the Holy Ghost as well as, amen, the church, if some of the assembly would step forward toward the altar, it might give some folks a little, amen, more of a rest to come to this altar. Amen. Don't take up, amen, the, amen, too much room, but just come, amen, reach out, amen, and let's make room for anybody in this room today, any child, any adult, any, amen, any young person. We're reaching out all over this room. Don't Leave this room without the Holy Ghost today. Come on, any children that needs the Holy Ghost, parents, in, encourage them. Any young people, anybody else, let's, let's do our best to help them pray through. Let's do our best to help them pray through. Come on, don't stay back there if you need the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is a place to get what you need. Don't stay back there if you need it. Come on, encourage someone close to you to come on to this altar. And anybody in this altar, don't leave anybody in these altars alone praying that needs the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's it, church. Let God use you. Come on, let God use you. Find somebody. Find somebody that needs the Holy Ghost and help them pray. Let's try to help somebody that needs the Holy Ghost too today. Help them pray through. Help some of these teenagers, these others.
strength. 